Hey everyone, it's Kelsey. We've mentioned the seven continents, eight if you count Oceania, and we've looked briefly at where they're located on the globe. Today we're going to begin exploring the continents in depth, seeking out the characteristics that make them unique and interesting. We'll begin in the Western Hemisphere on the continent of North America, with two countries that have been friends for a long, long time. Hundreds of years, in fact. These two countries share history, culture, physical features, and even the longest international border in the world. I'm talking, of course, about the United States and Canada. Canada and the United States, in that order, are the two largest countries by land area in North America. Mexico, just to the south of the United States, is the fourth largest, but is commonly associated with the Spanish-speaking countries of Central and South America, and is often grouped within the broadly defined perceptual region of Latin America. Yes, that's right, I said Mexico is the fourth largest country in North America, which means there must be another very large country in North America that's smaller than Canada and the United States, but bigger than Mexico. It's a country that's formally linked to North America because of its position within the North American tectonic plate, but perceptually, it's linked to Europe because of its culture, its politics, and its currency. Can you guess the country? If you said Greenland, give yourself some Danish crown, because you're absolutely right. Greenland, northeast of Canada, is an autonomous country within the Kingdom of Denmark that happens to be the largest island in the world that isn't one of the seven continents. We'll get to Mexico and Greenland later, but right now, for our introduction to North America, we're going to focus on the United States and Canada, their location, and some of the prominent physical features they share, including the Rocky Mountains, the Interior Plains, the Appalachian Mountains, and the Canadian Shield. If you were to describe the relative location of the United States and Canada, the most obvious point of reference would be the oceans that border them, the Pacific Ocean to the west and the Atlantic to the east. Canada borders the United States to the north, and north of Canada is the Arctic Ocean. If you were to travel to the geographic center of the North American continent, you'd find yourself in the small town of Rugby, North Dakota, founded in 1886 as a stop along the Great Northern Railway's transcontinental route. That's an absolute location of 48 degrees, 22 minutes, 8 seconds north latitude, 99 degrees, 59 minutes, 46 seconds west longitude. The Rocky Mountains, or the Rockies as they're often called, are the largest mountain system in North America, stretching 3,000 miles from British Columbia in western Canada all the way down to New Mexico in the western United States. They're known as the Continental Divide because they divide the North American continent with rivers on the west side of the Rockies flowing to the Pacific Ocean and rivers on the east side flowing to the Atlantic, including the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean Sea. The tallest peak in the Rockies is Mount Albert in Colorado, checking in at an impressive 14,439 feet above sea level. The Rockies are home to a huge variety of landscapes and wilderness areas, including Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming, widely acknowledged as the world's first national park, Great Sand Dunes National Park in Colorado, which contains the tallest sand dunes in North America, and Athabasca Glacier in the Canadian Rockies, home of the Columbian Icefield, one of the last major geological features in Canada to be explored by Europeans due to its isolation and harsh weather conditions, and currently home to one of the most unexpected Starbucks locations on the continent. That's right, folks. You can get your tall decaf coconut milk latte at the Columbia Icefield Glacier Discovery Center, located at 52 degrees, 13 minutes, 13 seconds north latitude, 117 degrees, 13 minutes, 27 seconds west longitude. But it can get cold out there, so bring a took. That's Canadian for knit cap. The eastern edge of the Rockies towers above a vast plain, which is a flat, mostly treeless expanse of land that doesn't change much in elevation, and a prairie, which is a large open area of grassland. The interior plains, as this region is collectively called, stretch all the way from the Gulf Coast in the southern United States to the Arctic Beaufort Sea in northern Canada. Much of this land is used for agriculture and livestock, with wheat from the interior plains making up more than half the world's wheat exports. Copious amounts of barley, corn, cotton, sorghum, soybeans, and canola are also grown here. 
the largest portion of the interior plains within the United States, occupying the area east of the Rockies and west of the Mississippi River, is known as the Great Plains, historically home to the Blackfoot, Crow, Sioux, Cheyenne, Arapaho, Comanche, and other native tribes. East of the interior plains lie the Appalachian Mountains, stretching some 2,000 miles from Newfoundland in Canada all the way to Alabama in the southern United States. A number of smaller landforms, including the Catskills, the Great Smoky Mountains, the Blue Ridge Mountains, and the Cumberland Plateau are considered part of the Appalachian Range. People with a lot of time, energy, and motivation can hike the Appalachian Trail, a footpath extending from Springer Mountain, Georgia, to Mount Katahdin in Maine passing through two national parks along the way, Great Smoky Mountains National Park in the southern section and Shenandoah National Park in the northern section. The tallest peak in the Appalachian Range is North Carolina's Mount Mitchell at 6,684 feet above sea level. The Canadian Shield, also called the Laurentian Plateau, is a huge area of exposed igneous and metamorphic rock stretching from the Arctic Ocean over half of Canada and all of Greenland, down to the Great Lakes and Adirondack Mountains in the United States. The shield is mostly granite with a thin layer of soil. Human population and industrial development in this area are minimal, but the shield is home to some of the richest mineral ore deposits on Earth. Nickel, gold, silver, and copper are mined throughout the region. The Manicouagan Reservoir in northeastern Quebec on the Canadian Shield is the site of one of the largest known meteorite impact craters on Earth. A meteorite is a natural object from interplanetary space that survives its passage through Earth's atmosphere and lands on the surface. Geologists studying the impact crater believe that the enormous meteorite that created the lake island in the center of the reservoir was some three miles in diameter. Both Canada and the United States contain major drainage basins. A drainage basin is an area of land where precipitation collects and drains off into a common body of water. The Mississippi River Drainage Basin, the fourth largest in the world, occupies more than 40% of the landmass in the contiguous United States and 15% of the total North American landmass. Part or all of 31 states plus two Canadian provinces drain into the Mississippi River, which itself creates the borders of 10 states. In Canada's Northwest Territories, the Mackenzie River flows through a huge, sparsely populated region of forest and tundra. A tundra is a vast, flat, treeless region in which the subsoil is permanently frozen. Arctic tundra covers about 550,000 square miles of northern Canada. North of the Canadian tundra lies about 57,660 square miles of Arctic ice in the polar climate region. The United States has four major deserts within its borders. The Great Basin, the Mojave, the Chihuahuan, and the Sonoran part or all of which are found to the west or the south of the Rockies and to the east or south of the Sierra Nevada mountain range. Many people, even Canadians, are sometimes surprised to discover that Canada, land of ice and snow, also has a desert. The Okanagan Desert, the hottest region in Canada, is a semi-arid stretch of British Columbia containing hundreds of unique plant and animal species. As we continue to study Canada and the United States, the two largest countries in North America, We'll be exploring their climates, their ecosystems, their people, their cultures, and their economies. But keep in mind that all of these considerations arise from the kind of land that exists there and the kinds of activities and interactions that are possible. From this point of view, think of the United States and Canada as an enormous plain flanked on both sides by two giant mountain systems with rainfall and snowmelt draining into huge river systems flowing all the way to the ocean. With that mental map, try to begin imagining the kinds of settlements, cultures, and ways of life that might naturally occur. And this can give you a head start on understanding the past and the future of this fascinating region. Until next time, keep exploring. Hey, hey.